G'day everyone, it's Curtis here and welcome to an On The Back Wheel video. Today is going to be my first ride of my Suzuki V-Strom 800D. I'm absolutely pumped. I've ridden a couple of times to and from work but that doesn't really count. Today I'm going to do my usual adventure biker loop that goes that way in the Diagula Forest. I'm taking along with a few other guys so we'll see which way they goes. but I know the area really well so it's going to be a really good test of the Suzuki and I'll be able to get a good feel for it. The ride consists of some freeway to get there, a little bit of town riding, there's some nice back roads. Then it's a light off-road section, pretty rocky and gravelly along the way with some sharp rocks. Then it gets a bit more technical and fast and flowy. And then I'll see how I go doing the harder off-road section. I've left it absolutely stock, including these terrible Dunlop mixed tours. Well, they're not terrible, they're fantastic on the road so far. But off-road, yeah, they're going to be a compromise. I've even left the rubber mounts in the pegs and the rear pegs on as well so absolutely no mods the only thing i brought along with me is a screwdriver to change some suspension settings if i need and i can whack some preload in the back if it's a bit too soft as well we'll do a quick walk around i think it looks absolutely fantastic the winter sun's hitting it this yellow looks great and the blue is a really nice blue it kind of looks purple in photos but it's not in real life love the front section great looking bike crappy plastic handguards that we'll have to get rid of so let's go for a ride let's do it jumping on the bike very easy to touch for anyone who's a bit smaller stature like my knee is really bent touch both sides completely a little bit of a wider seat but if you're on one side very easy to touch cool thing about the starter ride by wire baby does it all for you some people won't like that but i like little tricky things like that Ooh. So I've ridden it to and from work at around the block once and on a basic gravel road near my house. No proper off-road, so I'm really excited to do that and test out the settings. Whew. Definitely got a little bit of shove. The bike is extremely quiet. I can barely hear it. Like when I'm riding and it's a little bit of wind, I can't hear the bike. So that has to change. Plus that a huge exhaust in the back, no, that weighs like 10 kilos. So we'll get rid of that as soon as possible. The bike feels very sit-in. Like extremely comfortable. This is one of the best seats I've ever sat on a bike. This is not exaggerating. It is, it is great. It doesn't give a lot of maneuverability, like going backs and forwards. Definitely not a dirt bike seat, more road orientated seat for sure. The screen's really low and just hits you straight in the face, the wind. Doing 80 kilometers per hour, it's like 50 miles per hour, no buffeting though. I'm just rushing a bit to get to the guys and running late. I decided like late last night I was going on this ride. Uh, I was just gonna go by myself so I could take my time, record stuff, you know, not do some sections if I wanted to because it's brand new, no protection at all. And I wanna look after this one a little bit better than the KLR. The KLR cops a bit of a hiding. Whereas this one, it's a much more expensive bike, 18 and a half thousand dollars right away. So uh, I think the KLR was 10, four right away with six months retro where well, this has 12 months so quite a significant jump in price and a much bigger investment so we'll see what kind of riding i'm going to do on it i'm definitely going to push it to its limits don't worry about that this thing is going to get pushed it's just whether i do stupid single track and stuff like that we'll see i always get excited <laughs> okay let's talk about how it feels it feels electric smooth like incredibly smooth Riding position is fantastic. See how it feels standing up. It feels quite small standing up. Uh, like I think the bars need to definitely be higher for me. A little bit higher, so I might get some rises. But the sit-in position feels fantastic. A little bit hesitant to turn in, maybe. Incredibly planted and neutral feeling. Rolling on. Yeah, it's got a little bit sharp. That's for sure. The bottom and mid's great. It's bloody cold over on 8 degrees Celsius. Pretty cool. It tells you the dash is. Loving the dash, by the way. Super clear, easy to read, uncomplicated. I like that. So one thing I will notice is the clutch pickup point is really close to the bars. Uh, I've adjusted all the way out here. This is really nice to cover, by the way. It's a nice cover. I've adjusted all the way out there and it's still pretty bloody close. 
see how that goes off-road. I'm used to it picking it up a little bit further out. Maybe I can adjust it down to there as well, or maybe it'll wear it a bit. It's, it's not bad, not bad at all. And certainly not on the road, just slightly different. Okay, 100 km hour zone. A little thrum through the bike. Tiny vibration as you speed up. Sitting at four and a half, four, four thousand. Four and a half thousand, 102 km per hour, which is 61 miles per hour. I could do this all day. Incredibly smooth. Wind noise, yeah, it's pretty loud. That's just my helmet though. It's not due to any buffeting. There's no buffeting. I prefer that. I prefer the wind just to blast me straight in the face. That's what she said. <laughs> that was a good one. Pay that one, guys. Pay that one. I prefer it just to hit me. Then to just hit certain areas and buff it. Whereas this is just copping it. Oh, see you, buddy. Oh. Woo -hoo -hoo! Window head. 120, which is... Let me do the map in my head. 73 miles per hour. Effortless. The bars, very wide, flat feeling. Great bend. Really like this bend. For me, maybe just a tiny bit narrower would be great. So the highway section is over. And this thing feels like it could do it all day. Super nice on the highway. So smooth, lovely, really enjoyable actually. The suspension feels supple. Yeah, that's right, I use the word supple for suspension. <laughs> not sexual, not sexual guys. But seriously, the suspension feels supple, but it's still firm and not wallowy. It feels reasonably premium. I'm really enjoying this first kind of road impression. I'm gonna stop, take up with the guys, do some twisties, hit the off-road. Well, everyone, I've turned up, and everyone is on enduro bikes. <laughs> we got a 252 Strike, a 350 Husqvarna, WR450, the other guys are on similar bikes around the corner. This could be interesting. Hey, I'll dust them on the road. <laughs> There's something about registered two strokes on the road that I find hilarious and amazing. <laughs> oh, quick shift on this. I haven't mentioned it yet, but it's bloody good. <laughs> two strike. Warm up, buddy. So I've done a few corners and the bike feels pretty reluctant to turn in initially. That's one of the first things I noticed when I rode it around the block uh, when I got the bike. I was like, oh, it doesn't feel like it wants to turn in. A lot of that was because I just didn't feel comfortable on the bike yet. Now I'm starting to get more comfortable. You can actually push this bike pretty hard. You just got to throw it in a little bit harder than some other bikes. But once it's there, it's great. You just got to muscle it that little bit more. I'm not sure whether that's the kind of tyres are on it, a little bit extra weight, the geometry, I'm not sure. But yeah, worth, worth mentioning. Yeah, it feels really good in the corners. It definitely does. As a road bike, this is very, very good. Quick shifter up and down. Perfect. It's really good. The gearbox itself is just really good. Brakes are good. Now, this bike is hard to fold on the road. It really is. Quick shift down. Oh. Butter. Right, that's the road section done. Just gonna leave everything in the stock settings I've got. Traction control on one, ABS on one, which is the least intrusive. Traction control's kicking in there, but gripping really good. Yeah, that's that's really hooking up. Just gonna wash the front tire. Rear tire I can put up with, but a road orientated front. Yeah, that that'll make you pucker. Water crossing here. No water. That means it's going to be dry. <laughs> yeah, traction controls kick it in for sure. You can see it on the dash too. Turn that onto gravel, which is supposed to allow a bit of slip. Oh, okay, that hooks up and then slides. It wants to go. The motor just wants to go. Down first. 
yeah, it's pretty good. Slippery for sure. We got past Mark. Put the hammer down. Yeah, gravel mode is super predictable and smooth. The bike itself is really smooth. Definitely feels like a big bike, but there's no denying that. Full blast. Yeah. This gravel mode is really good to get a feel for it all. The engine is super quiet. I definitely like a bit more noise. Like you can't actually hear it properly. Just a dull thrum in the background. So I'm standing up here and the bars are too low. They're fine. I just like them a bit higher. Quick shift. <laughs> she gets along. So these tyres are fine for this kind of riding. Absolutely fine when it's dry. So just a heads up, I have it in the most aggressive engine map. I don't think I'll ever take it out of that. It's got 80 horsepower, it doesn't have 180, so I was leaving it in that. A throttle response is perfect. On off throttle response is perfect, and it's immediate. Suspension feels really good on this stuff. I imagine it's gonna be a little bit soft for the other stuff. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we just did some rocky kind of sections and we still are definitely can't push as hard as like my klr or t7 as it is i hit a sharp rock and i was like oh i feel like i'm gonna break something <laughs> i've still got abs on one and it's fine all right it's gonna get rocky down here a bit tricky yeah feels good so far very uh, cautious on these tyres. Don't want to crash when you bike people. Feeling good in this downhill section. Yeah, handled it well. Rocks. Fourth gear. Wash out. Okay, we got trash control off, ABS off. Really skating slippery, Let's see how we go. Oh yeah, she's loose. Up a second, get more traction. Treat. Goes much better with the Traction control off. Just gonna watch it. <laughs> front end is washed down a bit. I put half a turn into the front forks and two more clicks into the rear preload. Way powder. Well, it's always <laughs> Woo! pretty free revving. And interesting though, the engine braking, not a lot, which I like. It kind of just rolls in the turns. <laughs> Bit of air time, front's better. Yeah, that suspension's better. It's a bit soft for me for them blowing through. 
Way. Second gear, see how it goes from slow. Really nice. Yay! Better than I thought. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Big front tuck. That made the heart go flutter. Nearly the first off. This bit's really soft. Wait back. Oh, that's really soft. Wait back, wait back, wait back. Send pegs. I'm actually sitting through those sections on the passenger seat. Trying to get my weight back. Pet annoyance so far. ABS turning itself back on every time the ignition's off. Traction control stays off though. A brake everyone, you guys should know this section. Should be fun. First gear. Rocky, washed out, slippery. Whee! Nice. Up second. Nice, nice, nice. It's surprising how much these uh, front tyres actually grip, especially the rear. Fronts, oh yeah, scaring me a bit. <laughs> Second gear. Way. Still second, or oh, second's chugging nicely. Then first, just in case. Lovely. Bit of air time. Expecting Shane to come flying past and he's 450. Whee! Hey, we got there. Bit loose. I usually attack these corners really hard, but the front won't bite to do that. That'll be fixed in the future, don't worry about that. Oh, big hit. Shane's right behind me. <laughs> Whoa! Hey! Whiskey throttle! Loose! I expected it to spin out, it got grip. That ain't gonna slow me down. Oh, this was really rocky. Good for punctures. Here he goes. <laughs> so that's what fast rider going past enduro bike, how much quicker they are. Woo! It shoots off. That's what caught me before. One, I'm a bit stiff in the bike, getting used to it. It just shoots off. It's got to be loose in that one section. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, fuck, a bit much throttle. I was expecting it to slide and it gripped it. Went, Whoa. Yeah. We're into a little bit tricky stuff now. A brakes more fast and stuff, whereas this is a bit trickier, tight switchbacks, rocky, and incredibly dry. As I say that, there's a little bit of water here. I'll see how the clearance is. No bottom outs. 
That's good. It's tiring though. Woo -hoo -hoo. That extra bit of oomph out of corners and weight. Yeah, it takes it out, yeah. Plus, I was being silly. Now I'm calming down. Riding a bit smoother. It's really good. Yes, this is so good. Vistrom's handling it great. Oh, I could ride here all day. Got work later though. <laughs> Damn work. Get in the way of fun. Like the Tenere, second and third gear, really good. I am catching myself a little bit just snapping on the throttle a bit too much. Oh, I need to be smoother. It's causing me to lose balance. Sometimes shoot the front a bit, like that whiskey throttle I did earlier. I'm used to nailing the throttle over hills and that. And uh, on the KLR, nice berm. Woo. Yeah, I'm used to nailing the throttle. You can't do that in this. If you do, it, just, it sends you. Oh, eats the dirt. When I get a Motos or something on the back, and an MT21 maybe on the front, oh. Fun. There we go. They, I read this in the manual. Not to use the quick shifter when it's sliding because it just won't work, and then it didn't work. Good, that's good to know. I don't mind at all. I'll just use the clutch. I've done it my whole life. Oh, washouts. So, I was bottoming out before. I checked uh, the suspension. Yeah, it was bottoming out at the front fork. So, I'm going to put half a turn more into the front forks to see how that goes. All right, let's slow it down a bit and get a good feel for how this. Oh, pretty good. Suspension. Now it's not blowing through as much. Ooh. Maybe I'll leave it that turn out, half a turn out on the road, but off road. Really nice. So far, could use a bit more, as I said. Just keep the on road comfort. The only thing I touched the rear is the preload. It has a lot of clicks. Lots. Like the manual says something like, oh yeah, just put it in another 25 clicks. I was like, what the hell? Liking this, guys. Really liking this. Oh, this burns good to blast with knobbies on. Oh, it just, yeah. <laughs> when it grips, it pulls you back. Oh, yes. Big hit there. Mud. Oh, hit that weird. <sighs> hey, it's it's super quiet. But I think with the pipe, this is gonna sound fantastic. Oh, tricky bit. Up to the left, cross, split that, split up oh, big rock. Easy. Yes, you can tell it does sound good. It's just really hidden away in that massive exhaust. Oh, there you go. Big hit, guys. Big hit. Protect the rims. Oh. I think everybody heard that. All right. Time to do some tricky off-road stuff. This is going to be wild because it's so slippery. It's drawing attention, the, uh, the big DE. People are definitely interested in it. Everyone on the rides asking how it is, and a couple other rides have stopped and asked as well. I put another half turn into the front forks and another two clicks into the preload. Let's we'll see how that goes. Feeling good. You gotta be so easy on the throttle. I know I said earlier, you know, why would you waste your time with the other settings? It's got 80 horsepower, but it's easy to wick it on and get yourself in trouble. Oh, go around this way. Some cross ruts here, they really catch out. Big hit. Oh, and pretty good. An extra uh, half turn really helps. Oh. Alright, not 
hitting the pegs through there. That's good. It's quite a little deep section there. Still bottomed out. I was only a little jump too. You can hear that donk. All right, tricky stuff starting. Hard to keep up with the enduro boys. They went the wrong way. <laughs> wrong way. Yeah, easy. Really easy. Just really slow, so I'm testing the uh, fueling and everything. Doesn't flame out. And this reminds me of a souped up CF Moto MT800. It's similar in like the weight and stuff like that. But it's got better suspension. Same as the uh, 900 Rally Pro. A bit, bit more like that maybe. In that kind of category. It's a bit bigger. Could lose a bit of weight. But very capable. There we go. <laughs> Slides out really easy. Just got grunt for days. Second gear from nothing. Whoa. Down to first. Back up in the pegs. Really rocky. First gear. Back to second. It can get away from you a little bit. Like if you come over a big jump, well not a big jump, but like a jump, it's a bit rough, and you're on the gas. Yeah, it kind of wants to do its own thing a little bit. Plus that extra grunt shoots you off a bit. Oh yeah, when she hits rocks and stuff, you know it's the weight that throws you off balance. Unexpected like. Unexpected like, yeah, I said that. That's that's the word that's words, it's English. Alright, I I could see why people would use the other maps. The, this one, it's not snatchy or anything. Oh, this is rocky as hell. Rut it out. It's not snatchy or anything, it's just got a lot. It's immediate, it's responsive. So as you get tired, it can definitely catch you out. Oh, it just shoots forward. I've said it like 50 times, but it does. Just power when you get grip. Like then, it's like, Ugh. There's a couple more tricky bits coming up that will be really good tests. I don't think I'm going to have any issues, to be honest. This fits good. Big downhill section. Suspension's pretty good. My only complaint is it's a bit soft. Bottoms out easy. But how it feels is really good. I'd go the stuff as well, yeah. I'm probably gonna go there. Yeah. Yeah, easy. Come on, rear tire. Phew! I shouldn't have sat down. I was like, I'll try to sit it and send it. And went, nah. Just lose traction immediately. Oh, big drop off. There we go. Love it. So, a few of the guys have commented that riding behind this, it sounds fantastic. I so said when I opened it up, it sounds great. I'm super happy. 
some things I'm not happy with, but overall, super happy. Oh, cracked my foot just on the side there. <laughs> you can just use second gear in this. Um, across second gear, 20 kilometers an hour, like 15 then, fine. And use first for really tight stuff. Just how you want it. I mean, I'm not doing crazy hill climbs, don't get me wrong. <laughs> and there we go. Off-road section finished. Full blast. <laughs> oh, it rips. It rips. Engine, guys. May not have big peak power, but it's got some bottom and mid. Okay, everyone, I've finished the tough dirt section, so what I'm going to do is start heading home. I'm going to ride back on roads like this. It's going to be fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Then we'll stop and wrap up the first ride. I'm actually going to put the trash control onto gravel. Now I've got on gravel, I'm just getting a little bit tired. I'm not that bike fit, and yeah, it's a bit of a handful, the big rig. So that'll just be something I don't have to worry about in the ride home, but I can still have a play, still gives you a bit of a slide. Okay, everyone, let's wrap things up. I have to say, I'm very impressed with the 800D after my first ride. This is such a capable motorcycle. On road, it is fantastic. I would say it's the best middle size adventure bike on road. Suspension is firm, it's still supple and soaks up the bumps. Engine, super punchy in the bottom end and mid-range. Quick shifter is fantastic. The fueling is perfect. There's no like on-off snatch and it's immediate and responsive. Really liking it. At first, I thought it was a little bit reluctant to turn in. I think now that's just me getting used to the bike. It holds the line great. It's not super nimble, but it tips in completely fine. You just got to hustle a little bit. It feels fantastic on the road. The motor is super smooth too. Very nice bike on-road. Off-road, it is a bit of a handful. It does feel like every bit of those 230 kilos. It is extremely capable though. You saw the stuff I was doing today, I was riding with enduro bikes. And yes, when they wanted to push, they were much quicker than me, but I was still doing everything they did and setting a good pace and not holding anyone up. In fact, riding quite quick at times, even with these tires. I think even just with a better front tire, it's gonna transform this bike and how it is off-road. That weight is a little bit of an issue, I think, with changing the pipe, getting rid of the rear pegs and a couple other things to try and lighten it up, it will make a di big difference. But overall, very good bike off-road. And the ABS, there's the offsetting, which leaves the front on. I never had it lock up and it was really dry and skaty today. Maybe that'll be different in the mud. We'll see in the future. It's worth noting, the gravel road I've been using, G here, you can see, G for gravel, is fantastic. On these style of dirt roads here, it's great. You can just wind it on. It gives you a bit of slide. Really good. I rate that gravel setting. Ultimately, I was turning everything off when I was in the trickier stuff. I just didn't want to worry about any of that. And it was a little bit limiting uh, when it was really skatey and um, rocky. It was limiting. And you don't want that, you know, when you're on a hill climb, it's going to cut out or something. You don't want that. But I'm very impressed with the gravel setting. I usually just turn it all off. But... I will use that frequently, especially when I'm tired and heading home or something like that, or easing into the ride and I'm really like ham-fisted to start and excited, I'll probably leave that on. The seat, I think, for me, on the road, it's perfect. It's probably one of the best road seats I have used. It is that good. But off-road, I couldn't get back enough. So maybe I'll look at getting a high seat, which is a bit flatter, and doing that. And going from standing to sitting was quite a long way. But overall, it is a fantastic seat. I'm so keen to mod this bike more and adjust everything and really see what this bike can do. Okay, everyone, I'm going to head home. Make sure you click that subscribe button. It really helps grow the channel and create content like this. I'm only doing a ton of content on the Suzuki 800D. Really good bike. And I had a lot of people comment on it, by the way. People were really keen to look at it when I first arrived. And then on the ride, there was multiple bulk riders who stopped and was like, who's this bike? Oh, it looks really good. I used to know people who had the 
DR Big, you know, the 750 single. So it's definitely popular. And it sounds good too. It's just so quiet. But people behind me were commenting, it's like, man, when you get on it, it sounds really good and rips. And I was like, yes, it does. It does rip. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head home, everyone. Make sure you click that subscribe button and keep it on the back where everyone catches.